happy to be here again and to um, and to dig a little bit deeper into what I shared um, in in the opening panel that I was a part of. Um, so when it comes to my to-do list um, for the world, it is pretty simple. We need to give young people equal opportunities to lead in creating the world that we want. What you might know is that the world today is home to the largest generation of young people in history. More than half of the world's population is under the age of 30, and 90% of this population lives in those countries that you saw in purple. Um, but as Gail said, this is not only um, a challenge for policymakers and for governments to tackle, but I do think that this is the greatest opportunity that this world has ever had. And if we have any hope in achieving the SDGs by 2030, um, this is really the that only chance we have. For so long, we know that those who inherit the consequences of the decisions that are being made today are not represented in decision making, which is heavily weighted towards the short term than the long term. And this is our chance to change that paradigm. We know that young people are keen to challenge the status quo. You've heard from Nisreen, you've heard from Jerome. Um, we've seen them taking up the streets in creating change around the world from issues ranging from climate action to gender equality anti-racism to democratization. So it should come as no surprise that we increasingly see young people unapologetically unapologetically speaking up and demanding a seat at the table. What we need now is for the world to embrace this disruptive, creative, and innovative approach to change to get us back on track towards a future where no person is left behind. In this spirit, I want to share three um, key areas that are on top of my to-do list for 2022 on how we all can better work and invest in young people in all their diversity. First, as governments around the world shape and implement COVID-19 recovery and rebuilding plans, we need to prioritize an emphasis on young women and girls, period. Young women and girls continue to be disproportionately impacted by the consequences of the socioeconomic inequality, the conflicts, climate change, and humanitarian crises that we see around the world. And on top of that, if you're an LGBTIQ person, if you're a young person living with a disability, if you're a young refugee, if you're a young migrant, these challenges will be compounded at different levels on your life. It's estimated that more than 11 million girls, 11 million girls might never return to school due to the increased gender-based violence which has been drastically exacerbated by COVID-19. How is this acceptable in 2022? And this is only one example. There are far too many dire stats like this um, that shows devastating impacts that the pandemic has had in reversing decades-long important development progress in areas like education. So by promoting innovative funding mechanisms that specifically support grassroots initiatives and local feminist organizations, and by actively removing structural and institutional barriers that prevent young women from making a greater impact, we can foster a world where all young people in all their diversity have equal opportunities to realize their true potential. Second, it is becoming increasingly clear that the socioeconomic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic will disproportionately affect young people for years to come, including in relation to their employment prospects. Even before the pandemic, over one in five young people were neither in employment, education, or training, a reality which COVID only made worse. Young people's education, training, and labor market intersection have been severely impacted, and in 2020 alone, youth employment worldwide fell by 8.7%, dropping at a more than double the rate of adult unemployment. And this is compounded by an understanding that young people today have already have far less income at their disposal compared to the generations that be came before them. So we need to bring young people's economic inclusion, economic empowerment back to the forefront of development strategies with a specific focus on training and jobs. 
quality, accessible, and relevant education and training, including digital skills development, ensure young people are empowered to reach their full potential, particularly in the context of the fourth industrial revolution, and make it one of the smartest investments that any government can make to avoid future crises and ramp up socioeconomic development. Lastly, it's important that we acknowledge the devastating toll that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on young people's mental health. One in seven young people are estimated to live with a diagnosed mental disorder globally, one in seven. And wide gaps continue to persist between mental health needs and mental health funding with only 2% of government health budgets allocated for mental health. So as we look to recover better together, we need to place a higher importance on the relationship between mental health and future life outcomes to prevent this pandemic from turning into a long-term mental health crisis for young people. We must end the stigma surrounding mental health and commit to providing better youth-friendly, youth-supportive mental health support for young people including especially, of course, the most vulnerable groups that I spoke before. I should also emphasize that all of these areas of transformation are included in the UN's efforts going forward, including in our UN's youth strategy. Um, we know what we need to do. The world already has the knowledge and the resources that we need to achieve the goals. Young people have the energy, expertise, enthusiasm, an ambition to make them a reality. Now, let's give them a chance to lead because achieving the 2030 agenda really depends on it. Thank you.